Okay, well last time we developed an expression for the geometrical factor associated with an array that we're calling the Wenner array. And the Wenner array is a, uh, well, you know, it was, it was very commonly used for, for a long time when we had simpler resistivity um, uh, meters, you know, that had uh, two uh, uh, source and a sink electrode and, and uh, two electrodes to measure potential difference. The Wenner array is a, is has a fairly simple geometry in the in the sense that the electrodes, the um, source to potential electrode, the distance between the potential electrodes, the distance from the uh, left uh, or the right potential electrode to the sink, uh, are all a. So that gives us a d1 equal to a. A d2, the distance from this potential electrode to the sink, equal to 2a. Uh, the distance from this potential electrode to the source, equal to 2a, d, or d3. And a distance from the this potential electrode to the sink, equal to a. So, very simple uh, relationship. And remember, we defined the geometrical factor as just 2 pi times the uh, the reciprocal of the sum and the differences of these distances. So, for the Wenner array, the electrode spacings, again, are just D1 is equal to A, D2 is equal to 2A, so on and so, so forth. And So we're just going to substitute that into the expression for the geometrical factor. Remember that the apparent resistivity is just equal to the geometrical factor times the potential difference divided by the current that we're injecting into the uh, into the ground. So once we figure this out, uh, we know what I is, we know what V is, we've measured some potential difference, then we can calculate the apparent uh, resistivity. So we have 1 over A minus 1 over 2A minus 1 over 2A plus 1 over A, and this is all to the minus 1 power. You can see that we have 1 over A plus 1 over A, that gives us 2 over A. Then we have minus 1 over 2A minus 1 over 2a, which gives us 2 minus 2 over 2a, which is minus 1 over a, which gives us 1 over a to the minus 1 power, so that the geometrical factor for the Wenner array is just 2 pi a. So no, it works out nicely. Uh, and you can build this into your instrumentation. You just uh, measure a potential difference if you are using a Wenner array configuration. Uh, you just multiply the potential by 2 pi a and um, measure potential difference in order to get the, and divide by the current in order to get the apparent resistivity. So, uh, you know, again, as you might have guessed, these geometrical factors are probably not always going to be this simple. Uh, we can have a variety of different array configurations and a variety of different uh, geometrical factors, but it is something which can be built into the hardware. Uh, if you know that you're using a, you tell your resistivity meter, the computer, that you're using a particular array configuration, it can e easily convert the measure potential difference into an apparent uh, resistivity. So we'll take a look at a, you know how we can calculate geometrical factors for for one other uh, a common array configuration. But right now, let's just take a look at a simple problem. We've got a homogeneous medium uh, down here. We're running a resistivity survey in a medium that has a resistivity of 120 ohm meters. We're using a Wenner electrode uh, system with an A spacing of 60 meters, so 60 meters from the source to the first potential electrode, 60 meters between the uh, potential electrodes, uh, 60 meters between the right potential electrode and the sink. And we're also given that we have a current of 0.628 amperes. So what's the measure of potential difference? First question. Second question is what will be the potential difference if we take this sink electrode and just put it off somewhere at a, at a fairly large distance. So, so taking a look at part A, well, <clears throat> it's pretty simple. We have a Wenner array. Uh, calculating the apparent resistivity is just take the geometrical factor times the potential difference divided by the current. Uh, we know that the geometrical factor for the Wenner array is just 2 pi a. 
So we have the apparent uh, resistivity easily calculated. Uh, uh, but in this particular problem, we're interested in measuring the potential uh, difference that we'd see. So we know we are, we're given what the uh, resistivity of the medium is. And if we only have one layer, then the apparent resistivity should be equal to the uh, resistivity of the medium. So the potential difference then would just be I times the apparent resistivity over 2 pi times the A spacing. So you might take a, take a minute, go through that calculation, see what you get. Uh, we've got a current of 0.628 amperes over 2 pi, which is uh, nicely 6.28. So that gives us a factor of 0.1. We've got 120 ohm meters over 60 meters. That gives us nicely a factor of 2. Uh, <clears throat> so that we end up getting 0.2 volts as our measured potential difference across these electrodes uh, or ampere ohms. <clears throat> so if we take, uh, so the first, the answer to the first part of the problem is just for part A is just uh, potential difference will be 0.2 volts. Now if we take the uh, sink electrode and move it off uh, to some large distance. Then you can see that the term D2 and the term D4 are going to be very, very, very small. So, you know, in the limit that D2 and D4 go to infinity or go to, you know, several, you know, a thousand meters. Um, you know, it's, a, it's the same sort of thing. So, in uh, <clears throat> this particular equation then, D2 and D4 go to, let's say, infinity, uh, D2 and D4 terms then uh, become zero, or close to zero. So that when we're calculating the potential difference here, we end up with zeros in these two terms. Our potential difference then is just the current times the resistivity over 2 pi uh, times 1 over D1 minus 1 over d3, have this expression down here. So again, we're just taking a look at the situation where the uh, <clears throat> sink electrode has been moved off to a significant distance. Uh, this um, array configuration is, is referred to as a pole-dipole um, array. So we, uh, but now take a minute, see what you get. What uh, what answer did you get? Remember, D1 is equal to 60 meters. D3 is equal to 120 meters. So V is now only 0.1 volts. So just going through the calculations here, we have 1 over 60 minus 1 over 120. Uh, these terms are given. That gives us 0.1 volts. So hopefully you got 0.1 volts. Um, we didn't, you know, we, we we didn't talk about the geometrical factor in this case, but in the future, we could simplify calculations for this type of configuration where the potential electrode separation is equal, is is a, and the same as the distance from the source electrode to the uh, potential electrode on the left, we could have a geometrical factor equal to 4 pi A and easily calculate this. Because we can see that the voltage is just one half of the voltage that we get when the sink electrode is located a distance A from the uh, rightmost potential electrode. So the next time we're going to take a look at the Schlumberger array. And uh, in the Schlumberger array, just, just take a minute here before we uh, finish up. The uh, potential electrodes are held at a constant separation, 2B, while the source and the sink electrode can be moved outward in steps without changing the positions of the potential electrodes. So that makes the survey a lot easier. Well, it's a lot less time consumer consuming. Uh, we're only changing the locations of a couple electrodes here. We don't have to worry about keeping this spacing, keeping these spacings identical. So you can see where this is kind of a time saver. The Schlumberger array is a little bit easier, less uh, time intensive, uh, 
uh, data set to acquire. So next time we'll look at the geometrical effect factor uh, associated with this particular array configuration. Again, think of the the, the uh, distances that we're interested in, D1, D2, D3, D4. Those distances don't change. They're always the distance from one of the potential electrodes to the source, from the other potential electrode to the sink, D1 and D4, and then from those same two electrodes to the uh, sink or the source. Our D3, distance from this electrode to the source. Our D4, distance from this electrode to the sink. So we'll talk more about this next time. Thanks for joining us.